hey, happy actual Friday this time. I was at IFA the whole week checking out gadgets and I have to say that it was the busiest trade show that I've been to in a long time. So many big announcements around laptops, new chips, new phones, wireless charging in your kitchen and more that I won't have the regular three-story format as usual, but instead I'll just give you a rundown of all the stuff that happened this week. So welcome to a special episode of the Friday Checkout. This video is sponsored by Nebula. Okay, we actually have some non efa related stuff as well, but I'll leave all of that to the end of the video and let's start with all the things that we've seen at EFA first. The biggest trend this year by far was that everyone launched laptop related stuff. This is tied to the new Intel Lunar Lake launch, which I've already covered in my previous video, and also to a new lower end Snapdragon X Plus chip being announced this week. The new X Plus now comes with 8 cores instead of 10, plus also less cache and a significantly weaker GPU, which actually makes this a kind of mid range chip, but in exchange, we should finally get some cheaper Windows on ARM machines too. As an example, I saw this 16 inch ThinkBook from Lenovo for $749. $49, which is on the lower end for Snapdragon machines, while on the more premium side we also got models that go for $900 or above. And on the complete opposite super premium end, Lenovo also showed off something called Aura Edition laptops, which were quote, imagined with Intel. They claimed that they co-engineered these for years and they come to very premium machines like the ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 13 Aura Edition that starts at an eye-watering €2,700. Apparently these feature some special edition higher-end versions of Intel's new Lunar Lake chips, which I guess gives them a tiny bit more performance than on other machines, and you also get this new feature. You can kind of boop an iPhone or an Android phone with a special app installed to any part of the laptop screen, and it instantly launches a window showing your phone's camera feed. This is powered by the Intel Unison app, so it uses the same tech as that, and so you can even drag and drop images to it. And beside that, there are also some more features, like a smart care app that apparently gives you free 24-7 customer support with a real human. Kind of a rare thing in an AI world, but the idea is that Aura should be a premium option. Now beside these, there are tons of other kind of regular laptops that I won't go through one by one, but instead, let's focus on all the crazy things that were announced. Lenovo showed off a concept machine that it calls the Auto Twist, which has a motorized 360 degree hinge that lets the machine follow you around. And it's also voice controlled, which allows you to, for example, ask it to open or close the lid. Open lid. 100% just a proof of concept, but really fun to see. Next, Acer had two really weird ideas, with the first one being a concept called Project Dual Display. Here you press a button of sorts on a special laptop and you can pop out the trackpad to turn it into a game controller. And as that happens, the speakers also pop out on the side and the controller is held there magnetically and even comes apart kind of like a Nintendo Switch. An extremely prototypey idea, but it did work surprisingly well. Meanwhile, the second Acer weirdness came in the form of an indicator that they're actually shipping on the trackpads of their real laptops next. And maybe pause the video and take a moment to guess what this thing actually indicates. Well, if you guessed that it lights up when the NPU of your machine is active, you would have been right. Why would you need to know when your NPU is active? Who knows, but this is actually shipping on Acer machines now. Moving on, Honor announced the MagicBook Art 14, which is a 1080p webcam that is stored inside a port of your laptop when you don't need it, and then it magnetically sticks on top of your lid when you do, and it auto-connects pretty reliably in my quick testing. This is obviously wildly over-engineered, but just look at how happy the presenter from Honor was to stick it on there. Lovely. And meanwhile, Asus showed off the NUC 14 Pro AI mini PC, which comes with a new Intel Lunar Lake chip and is remarkable for a single reason. It has a co-pilot button on the PC case itself. A co-pilot button? That's how you make an AI NUC, I guess. All right, enough with the weird stuff. Let's move back to reality again. In terms of phones, probably the biggest news was that the Honor Magic V3, the thinnest foldable in the world, was launched for global markets, starting at 2,000 euros. I've been playing with this phone for about a week, and as a foldable fan, I might even do a whole video on some of the tech that allows it to be this insanely thin. And next, one of the most surprisingly interesting announcements from this year's show was actually something kitchen related for once. It's called Key, and it's basically a wireless charging standard, but instead of charging your phone, for example, it can be built into kitchen countertops from where it can power kitchen appliances. And this comes from the same wireless power consortium that also made the Qi wireless charging standard, by the way. So Qi is like Qi, but for the Qi Chen. Get it? Bad? Okay, but I think it works. <laughs> 
Anyway, Key was apparently already teased earlier, but now it is official, with buy-in from appliance makers like Philips and Medea, and it should supply up to 2.2 kilowatts of power, which should be enough for pretty much any kitchen gadget in theory. You can move the appliance around a bit and it should still keep working, but if you move it too far, it stops, and they claim that the surface does not get hot, plus even that it's almost as efficient as induction cooking. Now that efficiency claim I am extremely skeptical of, I just can't see that being true, but what do you think? Could you see this catching on? Okay, moving on to outside of IFA, first Remarkable introduced their third generation product called the Paper Pro. This is a $500 model with color e-ink technology and a larger, more responsive display at 11.8 inches. And I gotta say, every time I see one of their videos, I wish I was an e-paper person because they all look so damn elegant. But alas, I'm not. And for our final gadget this week, GoPro has announced a new flagship, the $399 Hero 13 Black, with a bigger battery, magnetic mounting and charging, and three new lenses, but sadly it still has the same camera sensor as the 12 Black. Oh well. And phew, you survived the gadget apocalypse. What a crazy week we had. And now let's move on to everything else that happened this week. While Intel has had a very good week with Lunar Lake, apparently their manufacturing business actually had a terrible week. The company announced that it cancelled its upcoming 20A manufacturing process and that it is jumping straight to 18A instead, which was supposed to be the one after 20A. They tried to sell this as a good thing as they quote, continue momentum for Intel 18A, but there's a pretty obvious problem. Intel's next big chip series called Arrow Lake were supposed to be made by Intel Foundry using 20A. This is now skipped and instead the chips will presumably be made by TSMC again. And if that wasn't worrying enough, another report from Roy Reuters this week also claimed that 18A wasn't going well either because Broadcom, their biggest customer for 18A, found the tests disappointing. It's a bit hard to say from this far away what is or isn't working, but Intel's manufacturing needs a really big win and this doesn't sound like one. Okay, and moving on, the Bluetooth 6.0 core specification was just announced and this allows true distance awareness between the Bluetooth devices. This means you could kind of have an alternative to ultra wideband chips built straight into the Bluetooth standard. Kind of fun. And meanwhile at Microsoft, the company announced that it will announce the next phase of Copilot on the 16th of September. Is that a threat? <laughs> I don't know, but I guess we'll see you soon enough. And talking of terrible things, Sony has just launched a big game called Concord and then just two weeks later killed the game and pulled it completely. They only sold 25,000 copies of the game and if you're wondering why companies like Sony pull their games off the market completely instead of just letting them live or whatever, I think the answer is that by pulling them off the market they can write off the entire investment cost and everything that went into building this game as a loss and if they have a big loss that reduces their taxes. That is my guess. And for something pretty cool this week, NASA launched a website that spells your name using images from its Landsat data. So here's my name, M-A-R-T-O-N, for example. Really cool, and I'll put the link down in the description if you want to try. Oh man, I'm so happy that we finally entered Techtember or Techtober or whatever else we want to call this period when we get hundreds of new announcements every week. I'm a complete news junkie, and if you are too, then maybe you should check out Nebula News. It is a dedicated page inside Nebula that is all about news. Nebula has just launched a new original called WTF USA, which covers the ongoing US election in a weekly format, and it perfectly scratches the itch of my obsession with US politics, plus the Friday checkout is on Nebula News of course, and so are the guys behind TLDR News, Morning Brew and more. I love having a place where thoughtful creators that I can actually trust have done the legwork to make sure that I'm getting real news, not some nonsense, and it's become a daily habit of mine to check in here. Nebula of course is our very own video streaming service built and run by a group of thoughtful educational creators, and beside news it also hosts our regular videos and tons of originals as well. I now even do an extra Q&A session for Nebula viewers at the end of almost every video of mine, so if you send me your question now I could have it answered on Nebula by next week. Nebula has no ads and no weird tracking and is instead simply funded by people like you who subscribe and then that allows us to create more and better content for you. It's a very clean trade. Nebula is also extremely affordable and if you sign up using my link in the description, you can also get a discount which brings it down to just $36 a year. $36 for a full year. Using my link go.nebula.tv slash tfc which is linked in the description too also lets Nebula know that I sent you and so you directly support my channel that way. And if you hate ongoing subscriptions, you can even instead choose a lifetime membership. That is pretty cool. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next Friday.